Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at um, the for loop in C++. I totally forgot in the last video that we still haven't covered the most important type of loop in C++. And I've saved um, this one for after we covered while because and do while because it's a little bit more complicated, but it's very commonly used and very, very useful. So the, the for loop uh, looks like this. First we have the keyword for, then round brackets, and uh, we're going to put some stuff in those round brackets, and then we have the curly brackets that contain the code we want to execute multiple times. Now in these round brackets here, I'm going to put two semicolons like that. Um, so that, that divides the, um, the area in these round brackets up into three sections here. And we're going to fill in each of these three sections. Now this in itself is a legal for loop. So let's see that working. This should be an infinite loop. I'm going to type C out hello and uh, endler. And let's just run this. So we see we get, we've got an infinite loop like with um, while true. But what we can do is we can put stuff in each of these to control precisely how many times the loop iterates. So um, I'll show you what, what we most commonly do with a for loop, although there are many possibilities here. So in this section here, in the first section, we're going to declare a variable that we're going to use as a loop counter. I'm going to say int i equals naught. So I've set it to naught to start with. Uh, so this section here will be run before the entire loop runs. Whatever you put in there, it's going to run before the loop starts. In this second section here, we um, put a condition uh, which um, the loop will execute as long as the condition in the second section is true. So this is where we put a condition that, um, similar to what we had in the round brackets for the while loop or the do while loop. So what we typically put in here is going to be something like i less than let's say 10. So um, if you want a for loop to execute, let's say five times, uh, you typically put i equals naught, i less than five in here. So that's going to be the number of times you want the loop to execute. And notice that uh, we've got i less than 10. We're not saying less than or equal to 10 because the first iteration of the loop has i equal to zero and the last iteration will have i equal to nine and that's a total of 10 iterations. And then finally, we put, a con we put something um, in the third section here, which will be executed after every time the loop has run once. So what I'm going to do is put i++ in here, which you'll recall uh, just in increments i, it increases the value of it by one. So um, we're going to start with i equal to zero. The loop will keep going as long as i is less than 10. And after every time the loop has, has, has run, this is going to increase the value of i by 1. And to see that working, let's just put in here, um, let's put i in there so we can see the value of it. I'm going to save that and run it. And here we can see that we've got 10 iteration, iterations of the loop from 0 to 9. So you can miss out any of these sections, or as we've seen, all of them. And you don't have to you don't have to follow um, this kind of stuff. You don't have to put this kind of stuff in there. You can get creative and put all kinds of things in these three different sections. But this is the most typical usage. You will say something like for int i equals naught, i is less than 10 or whatever, i plus plus. And after you type this a few times, you just get into the swing of remembering these conditions. Uh, so, although this looks quite complicated, it's, it's pretty simple, really. And to practice this, um, I would advise that you certainly go away and type out a for loop and try to, try to get to the point where you can type this whole thing without referring back to, to this code. So try to get to the point where you can remember this and create loops that iterate a precise number of times that you've decided on and experiment with it a bit as well. See what happens if you miss out the different sections. Notice that um, i is um, 
usually if, if we declare a, a variable like i within curly brackets, it's available within those curly brackets. But there are some situations where you can declare um, i in round brackets that precede the curly brackets. And then once again, i is now available within these brackets. So the scope of i, we say, the scope of this variable is these curly brackets. We can use i there, but we can't refer to i down here if I say something like i equals uh, 5 or whatever. It's not going to let me do that if I try to build this project. It's, it's not going to build, um, so I have to save it first and project build. So we see that i is not available down here, but it is available within the curly brackets. So as always, don't forget to indent your code by one tab, an extra tab within these curly brackets. And if you have any doubt at all about your formatting, um, just right click or use the keyboard shortcut and go to um, source and format. So that's it for this tutorial and until next time, happy coding.